What's going on YouTube family? Thanks for checking out this video on how to install the Sense Energy Monitor in your breaker panel. Hey, I'm Kenny. This is the Almost Engineer channel. And if you're checking in for the first time, please be sure to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below. So in the previous video in this series, I did a unboxing of the Sense Energy Monitor and all of its contents. So in this video, I'm going to take those contents and install them. And I'm going to show you how I did the installation, as well as some helpful tips and the issues that I encountered. For this particular project, the engineering level for it is a professional engineer. The reason being is because you're actually dealing with live voltage and that live voltage can cause serious injury, including death. Now I know death is not an actual injury, but you get the point. So the tools that you will need for this particular project are a screwdriver, you may need a Phillips head and a flathead screwdriver like I did in my case. Most electrical panels have a flathead screwdriver, but in the case yours has a Phillips, be sure to have one handy. You'll also need a hammer to help you knock out a hole on the side of the panel. And of course, you'll also need the Sense Energy Monitor to install. So let's begin the installation. So the first thing you'll need to do is to open your breaker panel and remove the face off of the inside of the breaker panel. The face actually protects the wiring so nobody can just walk up and then stick their finger in there and get electrocuted. So remove the face. Next, you'll want to identify a double pole breaker. So the reason you have to use a double pole breaker is because in order for a sense to be able to detect the electricity, it needs to be able to read from both of the inputs that are provided by the electrical company in North America. And in particular, where I am in the United States, there are actually two 120 volt fees that come into the panel, uh, providing a hundred and providing a total of 240 volts for those larger, more dedicated appliances, but a standard 120 for everything else. Next, you'll need to identify a double pole breaker. So a double pole breaker is actually two breakers that are side by side and they are both connected to each other. Um, and so that way, if you flip one, then the one that's next to it has to also be flipped as well. The reason you want to identify a double pole breakers because sense requires this. So the most common double pole breaker devices are an electric dryer, a hot water tank, electric hot water tank specifically, an electric stove, whether it be an electric oven or electric cooktop, both of those still use 120 volts, as well as the HVAC unit and the air conditioner compressor that is located outside. So if you looking in your panel and you see a label for any of those devices, those are the breakers that you can use for sense. I connected it to what used to be a breaker for a pool pump. I no longer have the pool and so, but the breaker still does remain as well as the wiring that was in there for the pool pump also remains. So I use this. Since in their instructions, they specify to use a breaker that has a very low amperage on it or as low, you know, reasonably low. And so the pool pump bre breaker actually has two sets of 20 amps on it. Everything else was either 30, 50 or higher. So I use 20 amps for the sense breaker. All right, the next thing you'll need to do is to do a punch out for the Wi-Fi antenna. And so for my particular breaker panel, since it is outside, I did the punch out for it. If you have your breaker panel inside, you don't necessarily need to do a punch out. You can actually just run the wires outside that connect to sense and then mount sense directly to the wall and then connect the antenna directly to sense. However, since my breaker panel is outside, I actually connected the Wi-Fi extender cable to the antenna and also to the sense device and then put that in to the edge of the breaker panel where it was, the antenna could be outside of the panel. So the reason that you have to use the extender cable is because that 
there's a thing concept known as the Faraday cage. And so what the Faraday cage is, is basically you have a device that is transmitting or receiving a signal that is located inside of some sort of metal box. And what happens is that metal box actually reflects the signal that is being transmitted or received. So it never actually, or is very, very resistant to reach its destination. An example of this would be when you go inside of certain buildings and those buildings, they, they you, you may be outside and then you have, you know, full signal bars on your cell phone. And then when you go inside that building, you may have zero or one or in some cases, two bars inside of the building. That is the concept of the Faraday cage. So basically those type of buildings, usually commercial buildings, have like metal roofs, metal framing, um, metal studs, uh, maybe even metal just walls in general. And so all that metal reflects the signal from reaching, you know, reflects it back towards the device instead of allowing it to go out of the building. And so for that reason, you end up having less uh, weak signals or no service at all in those type of buildings. So the same concept applies for Sense, where you put the antenna outside of the electrical panel. Otherwise, you encounter the Faraday cage problem. So once you have installed the antenna in the breaker panel, then you'll need to connect the antenna to the device. Next, since you've already identified a 240 breaker, then you'll need to connect the wiring to that 240 pole breaker. So first you'll need to turn that breaker off. Uh, just a matter of flipping the breaker to the off position, which is for the breakers that are on the left, you push to the left for breakers on the right hand side, you would push to the right. And you know, you can confirm that the breaker is off by look, checking the device that it's connected to and making sure that that device is not working. So if it's not working, that's a verification that that breaker is off. Next, you'll need to remove the screws that have the wiring connected to it. Uh, just remove them out partially enough just to be able to get the wiring in for the sense. So when you're wiring in sense, you'll need to wire the black wire onto one leg of the double pole breaker. And then you'll need to wire the red wire onto the other leg of the double pole breaker. You do not need to put both wires into the same leg. Otherwise, sense will malfunction because sense can pick up has to be able to pick up the left and right legs of the breaker and so if you only put both wires into the same side then it won't work i did research on some of the wiring and somebody asked well what if i have only single pole breakers in my panel can i wire those single pole breakers to sense and the response that was given was no and the reason being because a lot of times single pole breakers are not necessarily connected to both sides of the split phase that comes into the electrical panel. So it's possible that if you have a single pole breaker that it only connects to that side of the panel, whereas a double pole breaker actually always connects to both sides of the panel. So it's possible that your single pole breaker will only connect to one side of the panel, whereas your double pole breaker will always connect to both sides of the panel because double pole breakers indicate that whatever's connected to it needs 240 volts. And so the only way to achieve 240 volts is if you pull electricity from both sides of the panel. After you wire in the red and the black wires, next you'll need to wire in the white wire and the white wire goes to the neutral bar. Uh, if you look on either side of the actual breakers, there's it should be on one or both sides. There should be a bar where they bunch of white wires are connected to it and there may be also some ground wires connected to it as well that is your neutral bar so the white wire would need to connect to that then next you'll need to connect the transformer clamps to the two feeds that come into the breaker panel uh, my wiring in my particular panel comes in from the left and then snakes up the side and then connects to the bus bars at the very top. So I put my transformer clamps at the very top. In the documentation, it mentions that you only need to have the clamps. There is no particular order for which way the clamps are supposed to face. However, they both need to be facing in the same direction. So the trick that I used was one side of the clamp has a label on it, the other side does not have a label on it and so i put both of the labels facing up and so like up towards the sky and so that ensured that i had them both facing in the same direction 
All right, next you'll want to, once you confirm all your connections are great, then you can switch on the breaker panel. And so once you switch it on, you won't hear any noise immediately. However, if you are working in a dimly lit area, you can see inside of the sense device that is actually got lights on the inside of it. Uh, I didn't realize this because I installed mine during the daytime, but when I did a uh, checkup on it, when I had some other issues, I actually saw that there was a light. There's a light that blinks for the connectivity and whether it's connected or not. And then there's another light that's more of a power light, is it running type light um, that's also on. So if you can see the lights inside of it, that does mean that it is getting power. Uh, otherwise, you have to do like I did and wait about a minute or two for it to fully power up. And then once it fully powers up, then it will make a noise, kind of like a doo doo doo, and that'll be it. And so uh, that doo 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 noise will confirm that it is working. If you get no noise after about a minute or two, or you get a repeated beeping noise, that means there's an issue with sense. And so if no noise, that means you probably didn't wire it up correctly or wire it up at all. Uh, again, you'll need to check that. If you get a beeping noise, that means sense is working. However, it has detected a problem with the wiring and you'll need to make the necessary adjustments for that. Next, if you have not already, download the app and then connect to the device. I actually had issues with trying to connect to the device, uh, apparently for whatever reason, I'm assuming there was some kind of interference with the antenna and my phone uh, may have been too close to the input fees to the panel uh, that it wasn't able to, that was not able to find the device. And so I sent a message to support that was on a Saturday. They came back on the following Monday and stated to connect the antenna directly to the device and to the device and not use the extension cable and that worked perfectly. I was able to connect to the uh, connect the app to the device at that time and worked. And then once I did that, I switched it back off. I put the extension cable back on and connected to the antenna and switched it back on and it connected to Wi-Fi with no problems. So if you have that issue where you're not able to connect the app to the device, give that a try. In addition, also try restarting your phone, try restarting the sense itself, um, switch on Bluetooth, make sure you have that on. That was the other options that they recommended. Then after you have successfully completed the setup in the app, then and only then would I recommend that you put the face back on to the breaker panel. So, cause I had to take the break the face off probably about four or five times because I thought there were other issues with the wiring or whatnot. In addition to me having to remove the antenna required me to take the face back off again. So once I did get it in there and everything set up, then I put the face on. So as the very last step. So that concludes this video about the installation for installing the Sense Energy Monitor. If you have not purchased one but are considering about purchasing one, please use the affiliate link that I provide down in the description below. It will help me as well as help the channel to create more videos that you enjoy. If you have any questions about the installation process, you can drop a comment also in the comment section below. And please be sure to check out my website, thealmostengineer.com. Thank you.